Good morning everybody. Uh, I think today we're going to do a little bit of site maintenance uh, by way of uh, painting. So I think that's what we're going to be doing today. In fact I don't think, I know. Right, I'll see you in a bit. Right, I've got my ladders out. Got them straight, stepped on them to sink them into the soil a bit so I can get up onto the, onto the top of the tiki hut and do a bit of painting. With that there exhibit, eh? So we're going to see what the situation's like. And, uh, yeah, get a, bit of, get a bit of titivation done. All right, so first of all, I think I'll do the inner bit of the, of the pelmet that goes around the top of the tiki hut. It's not exactly a flat roof, this. It does pitch off. It's a couple of inches lower on that side than it is on that side, so all the water flows this way into the gutter and up and away but I'm just having a look around now look at that there that's split that's gonna to have to be sorted out yeah Let's see what the uh, gutter's like not too bad but yeah that's not good is it I'm gonna to have to sort that out but I'll get it all painted up first I just couldn't get to that bit because of the the solar panels, and I didn't want to stand on the or run the risk of standing on the on the solar panels. Um, but it's had a couple of coats now all around. I can still see a few. Uh, you know, it's not got the the, the the correct coverage for me, so I might give it one more coat because I can still see the the burr wood through. But uh, as I've been on here, I've I've also done the outside. Um, but as I said that's the only part that I couldn't get to so I'm going to get down to that so a couple of coats now so um, when it gets to better weather I'll give it a second coat or maybe even a third coat but, so it's very windy up here today and I'm a bit frightened <laughs> plus it's always been uh, it's, for, the, for the last five minutes it's been raining as well so I'm going to come down I don't want it to be a fool's errand where it just all gets washed off you know yeah it's a bit windy um, but yeah, I've got the first couple of coats. In fact, the pelmets had three coats on it. They've just had a couple of coats, and there's, obviously there's gaps down the side I'll need to feather in. But um, I'll get that done, and then next time I come down, I'm going to get the... Um, that's called Forest Green, that one. And um, I'll get the red cedar on, the red cedar on the rest of it. Another couple of coats. That should do us... Yeah, I think it finishes it off quite nicely, that. The contrast between the red cedar and the, the forest green. Still quite a lot of painting to do on it. A lot of touching up. I'm going to give it a couple more coats, I think, of that um, red cedar. And maybe one more coat of the forest, of the forest green. But yeah, it's looking alright, isn't it? Okay. So uh, next little job is going to be uh, to get some more, more seeds started off and um, we're going to do just uh, that very thing right now. So I've got the uh, Mr Fothergills Market Moor 76 which is a cucumber obviously. So we're going to be getting them off, off and running. I'm going to do about 10 of those. The spinach, I'm going to do about 10 of those, 10 plants of those, that's a trombone F1, good bolt and mildew resistance, tasty as a baby salad leaf or when mature, they're ready for going in now, March, coming up for mid-March now, March the 13th today, and again we've got March there for the Amazon, Amazon F1 spinach, Put that in now that should be ready for august as a, as a mature plant but we can be taking that earlier than that for sure doesn't take very long spinach turn your back on it and it's there bolt hardy beetroot this is from unwinds this Un unwinds again march april may june july we're going to be successionally sowing those um probably at about um 24 at a time and we've got some rainbow chard there as well, just to add a bit of colour. 
Bring colour to your vegetable garden, a lovely mixture of various coloured stems and leaves that can be used as baby leaf or for salads. Delicious cooked when mature. Rich in beta carotene, iron, calcium and folic acid. All good for you that, especially if you're a pregnant lady. Right, let's get it on. So I'm going to uh, get some filtering done. So we've got some uh, of the multi-purpose compost. Let's grab a few handfuls. Excellent camera work as ever, boys and girls. Crumble it in. To our sieve. That wind's really picking up, you know. We've got some strong winds of late. It's actually knocked over my pop bottle towers. Look, we're down at the front. I'll show you that if I, if I remember. Because I've got to bring them in. Just give them a riddle and a rattle. And what you're left with is all the big lumps. Which go into here with the rest to be further composted down. All right, now to that I'm going to add some uh, of the vermiculite, if I can find it. I have got it, do you? There we are. So um, I'm going to put about another 25% of this into that. Look at those little critters. They're not lace wings, are they? Out. Yeah, so about 25% uh, of the fine to medium grade vermiculite in with our sieved multi-purpose compost. And you've got a nice loose crumbly mix there, ready to receive the seeds. Now I've already done these ones. So I've got eight sets of shallots there uh, that I'm gonna be, um, I'm gonna be planting out shortly, but they're gonna be uh, in here inside the coal frame which is inside the polytunnel they're going to be in there for the next couple of weeks until they start to sprout through if you look at the onions that are over there we've already started the onions off a couple of weeks ago and uh, and they're coming through we've got the Stuttgart and white onions and we've got red barren at the back there and I'm starting some from seed as well and those are the shallots which I only, I only started off last week so they're not actually coming through just as yet but they won't be long but uh, as I say we're going to get the other ones in we're going to get these babies in right now okay first we get the tray in like that then we get the uh, sieved compost with the 25% vermiculite in like that Okay, chard first. You peel off the uh, the label part at the bottom that gives you the the sowing information and the use by dates. Tip out then your actual packet from inside, which is the foil packet from inside. Knock them all so that they're down at the bottom. Open her up and get your seeds out. Now the seeds look like little double crowns. The, the chard is in the beet family. All you need then is a pencil. You don't need a dibber for these. Down to a, a depth of about three quarters of an inch for the beets. Just in the centre of your cells. Put your little indentation with your pencil. Get the individual seeds and systematically work your way down. 
each row, dropping them in. And there's the last one in there. Then, because we've got some left over, I may well do these successionally. Let's see how these start off. Back in the foil packet. Leaf Beats Rainbow Chard we're on. Says it on the little pack. But we then put it back into the outer packaging. So we know what it is and we know when the use by date is so we can retain that retain the use by date which is September 20 then all we do sprinkle a bit on top of our mix thusly give it a pat down And they're all in. All we have to do now is label it. So I'll just get a little ticket. A little ticket there. Write on what it is. Straightforward enough. We'll read straight from the packet. Beet leaf, rainbow chard. Oh, I know rainbow chard is a beet leaf, so I'm just going to put rainbow chard. And uh, it's the four, 13th today, 13th of the 3rd, 21. Rainbow Chard. And pop it in. All of these are going to go into uh, go, in, go into the... Um, cold frame over there which I'll show you in a sec but that's that's all you do and then I'll show you the next step so they're all in the seeds are in I've got I know I've got 12 in that tray there's 12 cells one in each cell so yeah that's the beet leaf rainbow chard I'm gonna do the same thing with the Boltardi beetroot the two types of spinach yeah but then for these ones, it's going to be slightly different. So I'll get these ones out of the way first, guys. And then uh, we'll show you the cucumber one. Now, for the Bolt Hardy beetroot, um, I'm going to be probably putting maybe two or three seeds per cell. Because we want them to be sort of um, multiple, multiple plants or cluster planted. Because you can with beetroot and cluster plant it therefore retaining some of your grow space or maximizing your grow space without too much impact on um, on the actual plants themselves the beets will be smaller they'll probably be a, like a sort of golf ball size but that's what I want I want sort of three or four golf ball size beets per planting station so that's why I'm going to be doing them as a sort of three seeds per per cell three or four seeds per cell okay so i'm going to do um 24 cells three or four seeds per cell so we're getting up there to around about 75 um actual plants 74 75 actual plants i've got that wrong um 24 cells three to a cell yeah that's going to be about 73 isn't it 73 74 something like that per cell multiple cell multiple um seed starts cluster planted so if you look inside the little holes i've done those with my fingertip um you've got like a little clutch of seeds within each three or four to each you see so um that's what we want for these particular ones so we get those that cluster planting and uh 
a bunch harvest. Now, I remember that these were the ones that we grew last year and they did really, really well. These market more 76. But that was last year. Um, so when I've opened up that packet and I've opened up the foil packet, there's only six seeds in. So I must have used um, quite a few because I think you get 25 altogether. Anyway, it's sold by 2022. So they should still be okay. They were well sealed up. Um, so I'll show you how you, you know, it's a different method really for the cucumber, only slightly different. Okay, so we fill up our pot. Relatively firmly. Like that. And then we take our seeds just place it on because they only have to go down about a well not even a half an inch really below the surface these cucumber seeds that's what they look, what they look like just bob, them, bob them in again a little sprinkle on the top you want good soil contact, good to good contact between seed and soil, or seed and growing medium, I suppose. And that's it. Label them up. There's me six. Okay. It's getting full now, that isn't it? So we've got the broad beans in there, uh, the Tasty King cucumbers, there's four there and one there. There's the Market More 76 cucumbers, six of. Rainbow chard, two sets of Bolt Hardy, three to four seeds in each um, cell. And we've got 12 of the Spinach Trombone and 12 of the Amazon, both F1 varieties. Got some cauliflower there, Clapton F1. Calabrese, cabbage there, and there's another Calabrese over there. Yeah, it's starting to fill up. There's our alliums, and I've also got uh, got some more alliums there in the form of sh uh, red sun shallots. Those are. I'll just get the lid on. So yeah, there's the propagator lid on it. It's been cracked as you can see around there, so I've closed off uh, most of the vents because the, the air's going to get in through there. Might actually close them off altogether. But there'll be air getting in through there, you see. Okay. So we have got plenty of starts, but a um, couple of weeks' time, all this is going to be filled with seed starts, as is that area over there with the neglected dead plants it's going to be uh, revitalised with brand new ok now as we always say down here on the little farmer's farm and if I don't see you through the week I'll see you through the window Guru Mafinda signing out take care of yourselves and we love you all bye bye now guys <laughs>